Fairly Odd Parents is a Nickelodeon classic that shot to popularity in 2002, and at some points even overtook beloved cartoons such as SpongeBob SquarePants. I need it! With a total of 10 seasons running 172 episodes total, three live action movies, and a crossover special with Jimmy Neutron, it's safe to say that it's won the hearts and childhoods of most of us. Now, for a little bit of context. Fairly Odd Parents takes place in Dimsdale, which appears to be a bustling city in the state of California. Most episodes revolve around the Turner's house, which are where our main characters reside. The show itself revolves around Timmy Turner, Timmy is a 10-year-old boy who struggles with adolescent life as both of his parents, who go by mom and dad, neglect him and constantly leave him to be babysat by Vicky, who is the main antagonist of the show. His parents are quite uncaring and don't listen to anything Timmy has to say, meaning they don't listen to him when he tells them about how horrible she is. And of course, the two other main characters, Cosmo and Wanda. Cosmo and Wanda are Timmy's fairy godparents, who are granted to Timmy after the fairy world realizes how horrible his life is. Cosmo is male and has green hair. He's also the dumb one of the two. Wanda is a girl and has pink hair. Some other characters that are important are Denzel Crocker, who is Timmy's school teacher and later becomes the main antagonist of the show, replacing Vicky. He is mentally unstable and aims to make Timmy's life miserable. Timmy refers to him as Crocker, so that's how I will be referring to him during this video. Trixie Tang is the girl Timmy is obsessed with the whole show, and she's said to be the prettiest girl in school. Tootie is portrayed as looking quite nerdy and is the girl who's obsessed with Timmy. Not only does Timmy not like her, but she's also Vicky's younger sister, which is an added minus. So, without any further ado, let's get into season one. I'd like to preface this episode by explaining that Timmy's school teacher, Crocker, is absolutely obsessed with finding fairies and using their magic to rule the world. And he constantly assumes that Timmy is hiding something from him, and that he will eventually find out what it is. The beginning of this episode starts with Timmy's class having a show and tell, and not having anything to show. Timmy wishes for a cool dinosaur to show the class. Crocker is convinced that the only possible way Timmy would be able to come up with such an interesting show and tell would be through fairies. The dinosaur runs away, and Crocker asks to see Timmy's parents the next day, probably in hopes that Timmy brings his fairies. Timmy asks his fairies to turn into humans so that they can pose as his parents the following day. At the student-teacher meeting, Crocker sets up several different fairy traps that all inevitably backfire and most actually are triggered by the principal. Because the principal is the one caught up in most of the distress, she sends Crocker, Timmy, and everyone else involved in the situation to detention. Being too small, boys, they could enslave the Earth! That's not right! In this not-so-later episode, Timmy is craving popular attention as his biggest school crush is Trixie, a super popular girl who only hangs out with other popular kids. Timmy, tired of being ignored, decides to wish for cool clothes, a mansion, cool hair, and shiny teeth, all in hopes of impressing Trixie. While it might actually work as she is now more interested in him, because he's all these cool things, the fairy court gets involved and decides to take Timmy's fairies away, deeming him ungrateful for all that he has been given. While Timmy profusely apologizes, this doesn't do much to help the situation. Back in the real world, Timmy decides that all that he wished for isn't worth it if he can't have his fairies. So, he admits to the popular kids that it was all fake, and that he'd rather have real friends that like him for who he is. The popular kids find this repulsive, all but Trixie, who thought it was sweet and gave him a kiss on his head before leaving. Wow. Hey. The fairy court witnesses Timmy's selfless act and grants him his fairies back, and they all live happily ever after. That is, until the fairies gave Timmy a massive wart on his face as punishment. With a boil that big, you aren't gonna do anything social for a while. In this episode, we get an inside scoop on Cosmo and Wanda's relationship drama involving a mama's boy. It's Cosmo and Wanda's 9,895th anniversary, and it starts in a big argument slash misunderstanding. This causes Cosmo to run back to his mother's house for comfort, which doesn't do anybody any good because his mother hates Wanda and didn't even know the two were married. Wanda and Timmy travel to Fairyland to retrieve him only to find his mother trying to set him up with two other girls. The two get into a massive argument, so Cosmo's mother creates a game show in order to determine who Cosmo should be with. 
However, she also bribes the host to try and make sure that it's anybody but Wanda. This backfires, as Wanda and Cosmo are soulmates and make up anyways. Cosmo then confronts his mother and asks why she hates Wanda so much, to which she explains that she doesn't necessarily hate Wanda, she just hates anybody that tries to take Cosmo away from her. She then reveals that the two girls she was trying to set him up with weren't real girls and were actually just robots that were controlled by her. She even goes to the lengths of being rude to Wanda, and we see Cosmo stick up for her and basically tell his mother to back off. As a child, I thought Cosmo was a horrible partner, but that is so sweet. He makes me happy, and that should be enough for you! In this episode, Timmy is benignly inspected by not only his parents, but also by Jorgen von Strangle. On the news, it appears that someone has been shoplifting the mall, and they list off items that Timmy has recently wished for. Timmy's parents immediately become suspicious, and ask Timmy where all of his toys have come from if he wasn't the one that stole them from the mall. Timmy, not knowing what to do, tells them that he got the items online, but that doesn't work as Timmy's family doesn't have any internet. Unfortunately for Timmy and his fairies, this is when Jorgen shows up. He is immediately dissatisfied as Timmy seems upset, and also the knowledge of fairies is about to get out if Timmy can't convince his parents that he didn't steal another way. Timmy's parents resort to taking him to the police, and the only reason he got out was because Cosmo showed up with a tape that was recorded that night at the mall, and it was revealed that Francis, the school bully, was the one who actually stole the items. Because of Cosmo's bravery and a now happy Timmy, Jorgen passes them, and Timmy is off the criminal hook. Well, oh my gosh, two minutes left! In this episode, Timmy gets revenge on his evil babysitter, Vicky, after being forced to watch, I mean tortured, by her yet again. Timmy wishes that she turns into a little girl, so that he can be the mean babysitter instead. He makes her do all kinds of awful things that Vicky would normally make him do but he slowly learns that he feels almost no satisfaction from it. Although he comes to terms with his sins, it's too late, as the fairy police show up and revoke Timmy's fairy rights and give them to Vicky instead. You see, one of the main reasons Timmy got his fairies was because of how horribly he had been treated, so it's only natural for him to get these taken away, as he's now the alpha in the situation. Vicky uses the fairies to absolutely body Timmy, and they almost literally kill him until she learns of the rules and how that isn't allowed. Timmy then tricks Vicky into saying that she's perfectly happy and doesn't need her fairies anymore, to which they are released from her and reassigned back to Timmy. Now, this time, instead of using his powers to torture young Vicky, he creates a carnival for her and makes her have one of the best days of her life. When asked about this, Timmy explains that without Vicky, he would never have had a miserable enough life in order to meet his fairies. He also doesn't want them taken away from him again. Three rights make a left, and now it's time for the show! In this later episode, we find out what happens when a child finds out about another child's fairy parents, with some awkwardness on the side. After Timmy becomes increasingly jealous of a kid in town, he starts to question if he has a fairy parent. Timmy decides to spy on him and finds that he does. It isn't just a normal fairy parent, though. To Cosmo's dismay, it happens to be Wanda's ex-boyfriend, Juandissimo. He appears to be a handsome Latino fairy who is seemingly very good with the ladies. After Timmy confronts Remy, the other boy in town, for not needing his fairies since he's already rich, Remy challenges him to a fairy duel to see who is worthy of keeping their fairies. He also reveals that Timmy shouldn't be allowed to have two loving fairy parents when he also has loving parents at his side, even if they are a little brain dead. Throughout the duel, it seems like an even match, until Remy's fairy is distracted and annoyed by Timmy and eventually they lose the battle. Timmy feels sorry for Remy's family situation though, so he wishes that his parents have more time for him. At the end of the episode, it is revealed that Remy becomes stranded on an island with his parents, which forces his parents to hang out with him. Action, baby! Okay, so this episode is not necessarily important to the overall plot or development of the show, but when I think of Fairly Odd Parents, I think of this song, and I need you all to hear it. So deliciously iconic. What makes me happy fills me up with glee. It's March 15th, which marks the day that Crocker is the meanest. The episode begins with Timmy and his friends warning all the school children what day it is so that they can start preparing for absolute hell. During class, Crocker tortures all the children, and when asked about why he's so evil on this day specifically, he doesn't seem to have a response. In order to try and figure out what's wrong with him, Timmy decides to turn him, Cosmo, and Wanda into hummingbirds in order to spy on him inside of his home. While spying, 
Timmy learns from Crocker's mother that there was a time period of his life that he was happy, but that he has no memory of it. This gets Timmy thinking, and he decides to go back in time to learn more about Crocker's childhood. Timmy eventually zaps back to Crocker in college, giving a speech on why every child should wear a fairy-detecting collar so that we could finally be able to catch all fairies. He gets laughed off the stage and yells, This is the second worst day of my life! Timmy overhears this and decides to go even further back in time to find out what happened on his worst day. Also, side note, it's shown in this episode that Mrs. Turner is dating Dinkelberg, the neighbor rival of Mr. Turner in the future. He ends up leaving her after winning a bunch of money at the speech that Crocker failed at, to which Mr. Turner mops up her tears and they instantly fall in love. Anyway, back to the main plot. Back even further into Crocker's life, it's discovered that he is a dismissive parent, an evil babysitter, and two strange colored pets in his bedroom. The pets then turn into Cosmo and Wanda from the past. Timmy confronts them about being Crocker's fairy godparents, but they both have no memory of that ever happening. Although, they both know that March 15th is the worst day ever, meaning that something horrible must have happened. The next day, Crocker is giving a speech to a large crowd, and Timmy can clearly see that Cosmo from the past is about to set off a bunch of fireworks, and even starts talking to the crowd at one point, completely exposing the fairies. While Timmy tries to prevent this, it still ends up all falling apart. The fairy police, along with Jorgen, show up to revoke his fairies, and while his fairies get taken away, the magical device that is supposed to lead Timmy to Crocker is left behind, and is switched to find Cosmo instead. On the back of the device, it says, Fairies do exist, which then leads Crocker on his mad hunt for fairies for the rest of his life. Also, Jorgen banishes Timmy from ever interfering with that time frame again, as it's too dangerous to meddle with considering it almost revealed fairies to everybody. In this episode, we learn of the Pixies. Pixies are a lot like fairies when it comes to their magical abilities, they're just a lot less fun. They don't have any imagination, nor do they wish to. The episode begins with Timmy wishing that his miniature golf course was fixed, but nothing happens. Cosmo and Wanda are confused as to why their magic isn't working. That is, until they get a copy of the news and find out that the fairy world is being taken over by the boring pixies. Cosmo and Wanda explain to Timmy how horrible the pixies are, but there seems to be no way to stop it as they've already taken over. Timmy eventually learns, after his wish to get the mini golf course fixed up gets revoked, that the lead pixie actually loves golf. Timmy challenges him to a round, and if he wins, he gets one wish with no exceptions. And if the pixie wins, then he gets to keep Cosmo and Wanda. After a long game, Timmy wins just barely, and is able to use his wish to save the fairy world from the boring torment of the pixies. Yeah! <laughs> My biceps! I can see them! In this later episode, Timmy declares that he's tired of being in the wrong, so he wishes to always be right. Cosmo and Wanda grant his wish by allowing anything that he says to instantly happen. This works out in his favor for a while, with him being able to do and say basically whatever he wants. This all backfires once Crocker starts to catch on and claims that the only reason Timmy is able to have everything going his way is if he has magical fairy godparents that are helping him out. Timmy denies having fairy parents, and because everything he says becomes reality, they disappear. Timmy makes school end early and runs into an angry Francis, who he's been messing with earlier in the episode. He tells Francis about his fairy parents and they reappear much to his relief. Timmy also asks for the wish to be undone, so that he will never lose them again. The episode ends with Timmy getting absolutely bodied by Francis, who is coming in for revenge on Timmy for all that he did to him, which ultimately proves that he can't make everything he says become reality again. In this episode, we meet Mark Chang, an alien and the best character in the show. The episode starts with him fleeing his wedding and falling to Earth in hopes for refuge from his soon-to-be wife. She is a dark side, though, and threatens his parents if they do not tell her where Mark ran off to. Once on Earth, Mark begs Timmy and his fairies for help, and Timmy agrees as long as Mark is able to blend in, to which he has a magical device that can cause him to appear like a human. Cosmo and Wanda question Mark as to why he even had to marry the girl he doesn't want to in the first place, and he explains that he only was going to marry her so that their two parents could form an alliance, and eventually take out Earth in the process. He then explains that he doesn't want to marry her, because he doesn't actually love her, and he also doesn't find her attractive. Mark's inability to take one for the team does ironically save the Earth. After he tells Cosmo and Wanda about his life, Mark wants a hug, so he hugs Timmy. This causes his belt that allows him to transform to Short Circuit, and Mandy, the girl he's supposed to be marrying, shows up and blasts them. She freezes Cosmo and Wanda and proceeds to go after Mark. 
Mark and Timmy, not knowing exactly what to do, decide to put the belt that allows Mark to transform outside of Crocker's house, with a note that says, Fairy Finding Belt. Crocker happily puts it on and instantly turns into a Mark lookalike. Mandy shows up and takes him back to the wedding so that the two can get married, but upon kissing it, malfunctions, and his true form is revealed. Mandy disgustingly throws him out into the principal's house where he proceeds to get beaten up by her. In this later episode, Timmy learns a valuable lesson about what it means to be a good person and to do good deeds. The episode begins with Timmy doing numerous good deeds for people, all in hopes to get praise in return. Although, after continuously doing tasks for others, he doesn't get anything in return, other than criticisms over the work that he has done. Timmy angrily wishes that he was never born, which leads him to see how everyone's life would turn out without him there. Much to Timmy's dismay, he learns that everyone seems to be much happier in life without him. Jorgen leads him around town and shows that not only his family, but all of his friends and classmates are better off as well. Jorgen threatens Timmy that unless he can find someone who isn't better off without him, he will have no choice but to send Timmy to the place where kids wish to never have been born, which alarmingly looks to be hell. Anyway, after some reflection, Timmy does feel as though everyone is better off without him and agrees to never return. But just as he makes this realization, Jorgen reveals that this has all been a test. Timmy needed to be taught a lesson on how good deeds should be done, just for the sake of being a good person and being kind to others, not in the hopes to gain support or affirmation. The episode ends with Timmy thoroughly cleaning out Cosmo and Wanda's fishbowl and seeming to be a better person because of the experience as a whole. And it's right here. This episode begins with Timmy, Cosmo, and Wanda playing hide-and-seek inside of their fishbowl. And although there isn't anywhere to hide, Wanda refuses to let Timmy inside their castle, much to his dismay. Later that night, when they go to sleep though, Timmy shrinks himself down to miniature size in order to snoop anyways. Once inside the castle, he finds the Hall of Fame, which consists of Cosmo and Wanda's favorite godchildren. Timmy, upset that he isn't one of the pictures hanging up, decides to steal Cosmo's wand and wish the godchildren to life so he can ask them how they got into the Hall of Fame. The only problem is, instead of going back into the Hall of Fame, Timmy enters the Hall of Infamy by accident. Meanwhile, Cosmo hears the ruckus and gets up to see what all is happening. Timmy turns a few of the infamous children to life and they convince Timmy to hand over Cosmo's wand. When Cosmo finally finds Timmy, one of the evil children turns them both into ducks. Thankfully, Wanda is awake by this time and is able to distract the evil child with the wand when suddenly they are hit by a giant boxing glove. Timmy apologizes and explains why he did what he did. Cosmo and Wanda are receptive to this and explain to Timmy that the only reason he wasn't allowed in the castle is because they were in the middle of constructing a Hall of Timmy in order to praise him for being the best godchild that they've ever had. Okay, that is very nice. The good time we had with you! This next episode begins with Timmy wishing that he could be famous, and Cosmo responds by saying that he already is. Wanda, not wanting their secret to get out, tries to shush Cosmo by turning him into a block. But knowing Cosmo, nothing really seems to shut him up, and he ends up telling Timmy to just go to Fairy World to see. Timmy wishes to go to Fairy World, but Wanda warns that it's not polite to just show up to the Fairy World. To which, Timmy claims that he doesn't care about being polite and he just wants to know what's going on. Once in the Fairy World, he sees many fairies with shirts of him, and many are much too excited to be near him. It is then revealed that the fairies have an ongoing show called Timmy TV, where they watch aspects of his life play out in real time. Instead of being weirded out by this, as Timmy should be, he finds it entertaining and even goes to the lengths of signing a contract with the leader fairy who's in charge, agreeing to changing certain aspects of his life to make the show more entertaining. They cast a new person as his mother, give him a new catchphrase, and get rid of his two best friends and replace them with monkeys. <laughs> Timmy doesn't quite complain about any of these changes, but when they try to switch the casting for Cosmo and Wanda, Timmy puts his foot down. The manager fairy tells him that the only way to get out of his contract is to find someone crazier than him that the fairies would actually want to watch. Timmy introduces them to Crocker, and the fairy instantly eats up his crazy demeanor and weird lifestyle. All ends well, and Timmy TV gets discontinued and turned into Crocker TV. Never had
Dad, and your episode idea where he gets eaten by a herd of wildebeest is great! I'm not quite sure why, but this episode stuck out to me a lot as a kid. And while re-watching and going over these episodes, I seem to remember this one the most. This episode starts by a seemingly super nice school teacher taking over for Crocker. Her name is Mrs. Sunshine, and everything seems to be butterflies and rainbows. That is, until Timmy wishes for her to be his new permanent teacher, and he finds out that she might be just as crazy as Crocker, if not crazier. The next day, during class, Mrs. Sunshine tells the kids to call her by her real name, Miss Doombringer. She reveals that she knows one of the students has fairy godparents since her gold stars that she kept handing out the day previously detected magic. Timmy eventually escapes the school and is running away from her when Crocker all of a sudden lets the car slam into her in order to protect Timmy and get revenge on Mrs. Sunshine for stealing his job and forcing him to have a seemingly lower job as Crocwalk person. She is then seen being squished by a car, claiming that this isn't the last we will see of her. I'll be back, Turner, someday! This next episode, marking the beginning of season six, is objectively one of the most important episodes in the entire show. Poof will be born. The beginning of the episode begins by Timmy being painfully aware of Cosmo and Wanda's baby fever as they won't stop fawning over every single baby in Doomsdale. When Timmy confronts them about this, however, they explain that fairies are immortal and don't need to have children. Also that Cosmo was the last fairy created and it made a huge mess, so new fairies are forbidden. Timmy offers to just wish them a baby of their own, but the fairies are unsure if this is forbidden, as it isn't actually written in the rules. Right when Timmy is about to go through with it, Jorgen shows up and says that it's not allowed, and when shown that it's not in the rules, he realizes that he forgot to write it in the actual book, and he allows Timmy to make the wish. Later on, during the baby shower, Jorgen explains that he doesn't want anybody finding out about the baby fairy, as baby fairies have strong magic abilities, and if they're raised by a pixie or someone with evil intent, that they can cause massive chaos and destruction. Later on in the baby shower, Timmy has an outburst because he's so worn out from dealing with a pregnant Cosmo. He ends up wishing that he would just get lost. Much to the fairy's dismay, Cosmo does as he's told and gets lost. Timmy apologizes for what happened and claims that although he had an outburst, he really does want a fairy god sibling, and he feels bad for what he said to Cosmo. While this is all fine and dandy, Cosmo is still lost, and they're all getting quite worried that the new baby will fall into the wrong hands. Jorgen sends out an entire fairy army to try and find him, but all seems to be hopeless. Timmy suggests that perhaps the anti-fairies and pixies kidnapped him. Timmy, Wanda, and Jorgen show up in full army getup to rescue him, only to find that the anti-fairies had no idea that he was pregnant, but decide to jump on the opportunity of world domination and start searching for him as well. Wanda suggests that the pixies must have him instead, but they too didn't know about the soon-to-be baby, and start looking for him as well. Now Cosmo is in real danger, and he is prancing through a meadow? Silly Cosmo. After reuniting with Cosmo, he starts going into labor. Once the baby arrives, it says its first word, poof, that will eventually become his real name. Once the baby arrives, the anti-fairies, Pixies, Jorgen, and Mama Cosmo are wanting to take the baby away from them in order to corrupt, protect it in their own way. Timmy, Cosmo, and Wanda escape with the baby and learn that when Poof laughs, good things happen, and when he cries, horrible chaos erupts. It is also found, while taking him for a stroll, that when Poof hiccups, he causes natural disasters to form. Jorgen shows up and claims that this is what happens when the baby is not properly cared for, and before Timmy can object, he takes Poof. After Poof is in his hands, it's revealed that it wasn't actually Jorgen, but Anti-Cosmo and the Pixies. They explain that they decided to work together in order to capture Poof and turn him to evil. Timmy epically saves Poof by prompting him to do weird magical baby stuff that the Pixies and Anti-Fairies didn't know about ultimately saving Earth and the fairy world. Jorgen names Poof Napoleon and claims that he's now going to take care of him so that this never happens again. He also grants him a magic fairy rattle in order for him to more easily control his magic. The episode ends with Wanda revealing that she switched out the Poof that Jorgen has for a fake and takes the real Poof back home, where his gender is revealed and he makes Timmy's house sprout legs and start walking. Well, thank you, Turner. Okay. 
After living with Poof for quite some time, Timmy gets agitated with Cosmo and Wanda's continued absence in his life. He's forced to eat his mom's awful cooking because his wishes for better food are ignored. He gets beat up by Francis at school because when he wishes for big muscles, that gets ignored too. And to make matters worse, when he comes home, Cosmo and Wanda don't even notice that his head is literally upside down from getting absolutely pummeled by Francis. Timmy confronts them about how ever since they had Poof, they have completely neglected Timmy and no longer seem to have any time for him. They apologize, but to make up for it, Wanda gives Timmy his own magical wand that has the abilities to grant 10 wishes, but that he's only allowed to use it for emergencies and nothing else. Obviously, Timmy does nothing of the sort and uses them willy-nilly throughout the day, all up until he can't take back one of his wishes and causes mass destruction with a massive robot thing that he created to try and impress Trixie. Come on, Timmy, what were you thinking? Timmy, running and screaming away from all of his failed wishes and fear, gets rescued by Wanda, who starts reprimanding him for not being more careful with his wishes. Her and Cosmo also confront him on why he wouldn't just call them if he was in danger or needed help, to which Timmy says that he figured they would be too busy with Poof to help him. Saying this made Cosmo and Wanda realize that they have been neglecting him, and that it's not all on Timmy for what has happened. They all apologize and hug, claiming that they will always be a family no matter what. The episode ends with them all taking a family photo, together at last. Cowbots! Later in this episode, we find that Mark is alive and, well, on Earth, having the time of his life. He's celebrating his one-year anniversary with Timmy, when all of a sudden he gets teleported back to his original planet by his father. Once there, Mark's father explains that he feels as though someone is trying to kill him, and that he'd like for Mark to be crowned king so that he can go into hiding. Mark agrees and gives his father the fake of fire so that he can pretend to be Timmy on Earth. Unfortunately, the plan falls through, and Mandy shows up, being the one who was trying to kill Mark's father. She reveals that she knew once she put a target on Mark's father's back that he would want to go into hiding, and her real plan was to get Mark back on his home planet so that she could marry him. Mark finally gives in, not really having another choice, but Mandy isn't actually in love with Mark. She just wants to be ruler of his planet. She locks them all in jail and is able to also nullify Timmy's fairy magic since she planned for him to be there as well. Mark, not knowing anybody in the universe stronger than Mandy, starts to panic and give up hope. That is, until Timmy realizes there's one person he knows personally that could probably absolutely destroy Mandy, and her name is Vicky. They escape and head back to Earth. There, Timmy urges Mark to meet up with Vicky, even though he was severely late to the date he was supposed to go on with her previously. Once there, Mandy shows up. She was basically chasing them the whole way there. She declares Mark to be hers, which causes Vicky to beat the absolute crap out of her and pummel her into the ground. Who knew Vicky's nastiness would finally pay off? However, after she beats up Mandy, they go to kiss, which causes Mark's fake of fire to go out. Vicky simply turns away and tells Mark that they should meet other people. Poor Mark, he deserves better anyway. The episode concludes with Mandy in jail, Mark's father, the ruler of their planet, and Mark being able to live happily on Earth until he's good and ready to become king. It's gonna be nice to have everything back to normal. Timmy learns a valuable lesson on the severity of his wishing habits in this episode. It begins after Timmy makes about 36 dangerous wishes in a row in only five minutes. Jorgen shows up and tells Timmy that he has a serious problem called overwishing disorder, and that he's going to have to send him to Wishing Well, which is essentially a school for god kids who wish for too much. Once there, Timmy is locked in ankle chains with two other children, and they are forced to try and do basic tasks by themselves, failing miserably. Meanwhile, Poof won't stop crying after Timmy is gone. Cosmo and Wanda are upset because they also miss Timmy, and decide that they can just go and visit him. Timmy and his friends plan out an elaborate escape, and they go through with it. Once they reach the outside of the wishing well, Cosmo, Wanda, and Poof arrive since they were planning on visiting. They offer to help Timmy escape, to which he tells them that he's sorry and that he does overwish them. The three god kids then escape all by themselves. Jorgen shows up. Instead of them being in trouble, he lets them know they all graduated. The episode ends with them happily feasting together. Who wants fruitcake? This three-part movie series begins with Timmy messing around with his fairies and wanting some adventure. He wishes to parody famous movies like The Matrix, Lord of the Rings, and Harry Potter. All this is fun until Jorgen shows up and ruins his adventure by zapping away his fairies and telling him weird cryptic things. Such as, 
The fun time is over. This is not a game. Do not speak your name. After this strange encounter, Timmy tries to continue through his day and go to school without his fairies, although having no clue where they could have gone. Although when Timmy actually gets to school, he finds that nobody, not even his best friends, have any clue who he is. He then tells them his name when all of a sudden a large robot figure shows up yelling that he wants to eliminate Timmy. The robot is called an Eliminator, which is a direct spoof of the Terminator. Timmy runs away in fear, and eventually is saved by an angry Jorgen who tells him not to say his name out loud. Timmy is then taken to a fairy world on the back of Jorgen's motorcycle. Jorgen then explains to Timmy that his fairies are fine, being turned into gum and inside a gumball machine at a truck stop. Nice one, Jorgen. Oh no! He's baby! I don't want to be a gumball! <laughs> Jorgen then leads Timmy to a cave where he explains that long ago, the ancient fairies defeated the darkness. They said that if it ever returned, that the Chosen One would be able to defeat it. It is then revealed that the Chosen One has a description alarmingly like Timmy, leading Jorgen to believe that he is in fact the Chosen One, which is why he didn't want the Eliminators to hear his name. Ironically, while explaining the story, Jorgen says Timmy's name out loud, leading all the robots to their direction, leading to an epic chase across the fairy world. Jorgen eventually sacrifices himself and pretends to be Timmy in order to hold off the exterminators for a while. This only lasts so long though, as Timmy eventually gets frustrated and yells out his name while trying to convince the KISS band that he is the chosen one. Why is the famous rock band KISS in charge of the magic wand that eliminates the darkness? I have no idea. It's only when the exterminators actually show up that they believe him and blast them away with the magical white wand that is able to banish the darkness. Timmy then shreds an epic tune on the white wand, which happens to be a white star guitar and he then is able to defeat the darkness. It is only at the very end of the episode that we find out that the real chosen one, TT, Turbo Thunder is his name, shows up looking much more prepared to be the real chosen one, but all the excitement is already over. Timmy is basking in his fame and not having much of a care in the world. I gotta say, it's good to be the chosen one. The real chosen one is upset and tells everyone that the darkness is definitely going to come back, but nobody listens to a word he says. Meanwhile, on Eucopotamia, the planet that Mark is from, they're all getting completely consumed by the darkness. Mark is the only one to escape, and desperately flies back to Earth in hopes for assistance from Timmy. Once he gets him, Mark explains all that has been happening and that they desperately need Timmy's help. They also confirm that the reason the Eliminators are coming after Timmy is because he's the one that banished them the first time, and they don't want to be interrupted again. Timmy then takes them all to Jorgen to ask the real TT for help. But Jorgen tells Timmy that he banished him since he kept telling everyone that the darkness was going to return. They all head back to the cave where the original prophecy was found in order to find more clues about what to do. Mark, being the only alien present, lets them know that the language the prophecy is in is actually the main language that they speak on his planet. The message says that the wand that they now need to defeat the darkness is located on the blue moon. After finding this information out, they all get bombarded by Eliminators. But Mark and Timmy escape and make it back to his house and survive all encounters with the Eliminators. Timmy, wanting to rescue his friends and family, recruits his enemies instead, since he doesn't have anyone else to turn to. Once with his enemies, Dark Laser, Vicky, and Crocker, they all decide to stop at a cafe to get some food. They resemble Star Wars characters while there. While all they actually wanted was food, it turns out that almost every worker there was an Eliminator in disguise. They capture Timmy's enemy friends. I don't know, the people he took with them there to help him. Timmy then somehow defeats the Eliminators by shaking their hand? I don't know, dude, this episode is weird. Mark hypes him up, and Timmy ends up declaring that he must actually be the Chosen One. Then, all of a sudden, a huge dark void appears, saying that it wants Timmy. Thankfully, TT shows up and takes them to his own world that he plans on debuting after he defeats the darkness. He asks Timmy and Mark about where the wand is, that they need to defeat the darkness this time. Timmy tells TT that he'll tell him only if he promises to take him and Mark there with him. TT agrees, but is unfaithful in this promise and doesn't actually take them and leaves them there to be consumed by the darkness. Thankfully, Mark is super cool alien dude and swallows Timmy whole in order to save both of their lives and they also eventually make it to the blue moon. TT tries to fight the guardian of the new wand and fails. The guardian then gives Timmy the new wand instead and truly grants him the power of being the chosen one. Meanwhile, during this, Timmy's friends and family show up on the moon after they find out where he's being held. It is there that the darkness really sneaks up on him and he realizes that the only way to stop the darkness is to sacrifice himself, as the darkness seems to be mainly attracted to him. 
Fun fact, this is the one and only Fairly Odd Parents episode that ends on a cliffhanger. What's my hair? Perfect. The final ending starts with Timmy hallucinating a normal day at school within the darkness. It's trying to distract him from fulfilling his duties. That is, until Eliminator Zero goes rogue and wants to get rid of Timmy. The darkness doesn't want Timmy to die, but Eliminator Zero doesn't care and strays from the rest of the pack. This Eliminator starts going by the Destructinator and somehow sends a metal shield to coat the entire Earth. Meanwhile, Timmy and friends return to the Blue Moon where TT is located. He tells us about his backstory. The darkness took over his planet and ripped away his family. He also transfers his powers to Timmy so that he can be stronger and more adept at defeating the darkness. They also discover that the second wand actually released a bunch of magical energy from the moon, which lets them give all the fairies of Earth some more wands. And it also revealed that the third and actual wand that is used to defeat the darkness is actually hidden beneath the ice on Earth. All the fairies raise their wands and attempt to fix the Earth. The Eliminator ends up sucking up almost all the weapons, except a detonator, which Timmy sets off and explodes the Destructinator, which also destroys a bunch of the ice in the North Pole, revealing the third magical wand. It is then that Timmy learns that all the darkness ever wanted was a friend. It never started any of the fighting, it was only protecting itself. Timmy, feeling pity for the darkness, decides to light up the universe by placing other magical wands on every other planet. The darkness lights up and becomes the happiness, and all is well within Timmy's world once and for all. This isn't dark anymore! Trouble arises in the fairy odd parent world after the anti version of Poof is born. The episode starts with the anti Cosmo wondering when the anti Poof would be born, considering every fairy gets an anti. Eventually, it becomes clear that Wanda is about to give birth, and a surprisingly square baby emerges. Foop is instantly more intelligent than his family, and also being a baby fairy proves to be quite powerful. When Foop learns of Poof and that he existed before him, he gets jealous and defensive, swearing that he will get rid of Poof in order to be the baby that gets the most attention. The episode then cuts to the fairy world's perspective, in which they all realize that Foop has been born based on the abnormalities that he is creating. Jorgen warns them of the possibility that he could be on his way to destroy them, and Wanda is wagging out because Poof is too young to fight. Eventually, Foop does arrive, but Poof is back on Earth. Before Foop leaves the fairy world, however, he drains them all of their color and leaves them all depressed. On Earth, Foop eventually arrives, and he and Poof start battling it out. Poof, realizing that Foop is using up all of his energy, wishing for large things to help him, lets him continue doing this until he runs out of steam. Eventually, Foop is lured into sleep, and Poof is awarded as being a hero. Foop gets locked in Abracatraz, which is a high-level security fairy prison. In the end, he vows to take revenge on Poof one day. I mean... Very hot. Beware, baby poof. This later episode begins with Crocker being hypnotized by his therapist into not believing in fairies anymore, as believing in fairies has caused most of his issues in life. The only issue is, once he stops believing, all the power in the fairy world goes out. Jorgen, assuming that Timmy was up to no good again, shows up to his house to talk about what happened. Jorgen finds Timmy celebrating his new freedom from Crocker, until Jorgen explains to him that the fairy world uses crazy people's energy that believe in fairies to power the fairy world. They used to use a lot of people, but since Crocker's crazy energy is so strong, they slowly started to use only him. They try to fix their issue by literally taking Crocker to a fairy world, but since so much of the energy had been drained, there wasn't much to show. Crocker still doesn't believe them, so they go back to his therapist's office where she hypnotized him in the first place. They find out that in order to reverse the hypnosis, all they have to do is find his safe word. After pondering for a while, Timmy blurts out, You're the best teacher ever! He knows this is probably the safe word since it's something Crocker would probably never hear. After he snaps out of his hypnosis, he goes back to his crazy self. Jorgen swears that they will start using more crazy people from here on out instead of just one nut job. The episode ends with the fairy world being rejuvenated, and even Crocker's therapist starts acting crazy after she sees Timmy and his fairies walk out of the office. <laughs> Unfortunately, Timmy decides to be a good person in this episode and ends up with a friend that he didn't actually sign up for. In the beginning of the episode, Vicky is seen being super rude to Timmy, as per usual. She dumps tar on him and a bunch of feathers and basically just makes him look super ridiculous. During the extremely slow-moving construction equipment parade, though, she gets stuck in the tar and Timmy ends up saving her. 
The women from the Brat Society see this and kick Vicky out of their membership. Vicky, now not knowing what to do, gets frustrated with Timmy, who explains to her that having a friend means you have to be friendly and nice to that person. Vicky's heart then grows to a normal person's size, much like the Grinch, and she proceeds to smother and worship Timmy for the next several days. This annoys Timmy, though, as she makes him do a lot of girly activities. Timmy, wanting things back to normal, decides to try and make Vicky hate him again by doing awful things to her. Eventually, she gets so mad that we see her heart shrivel back up, and she completely goes off on Timmy. The brats see this and let her back into the group. The episode ends with Timmy watching as Vicky and the rest of her gang get squashed by an extremely slow-moving construction machine. Mini bagel pizza, anyone? We learn some fairy lore in this episode. Apparently, since the beginning of time, anti-fairies and fairies have competed against each other to see who deserves to have godchildren. Being almost identical, the only way to determine this is through their annual baking contest. Nana Boom Boom, Jorgen's grandmother, is the fairy with the recipe of the brownies that allow the fairies to win every year. Apparently, it's said that once you taste them, you begin to crave them. In the beginning of the episode, one explodes, and Poof eats it, and Timmy also gets a piece. Now craving them, Timmy reads the secret recipe in order for him to make Poof and him some more later that night. The only issue is that the fairies have an x-ray machine that can see the contents of Timmy's brain. In order to steal the secret recipe from him, they show up to his house to suck out the contents of his brain. Timmy avoids them and they eventually end up kidnapping him in order to learn the recipe. Little do they know that they actually kidnapped Cosmo and the only recipe he knows is bread-free toast. During the contest, the anti-fairies show up with nothing as you can't make toast with no bread and the fairies win for another year. <laughs> Something I haven't quite brought up yet is Mr. Turner's obsession with his neighbor, Dinkelberg. It's shown in previous episodes that as teenagers, Dinkelberg dated Mrs. Turner. But overall, besides that, nothing has ever actually been suspicious about him. Mr. Turner, however, has always assumed that he's evil and sinister and out to get him. This episode begins with Mr. Turner thinking, as per usual, that Dinkelberg is behind every bad thing that happens to him throughout his day. Although today is different because Mr. Turner is determined to actually catch him this time. Later, after infiltrating his house and pretending to be his wallpaper, what a weird man, Dinkelberg notices him and offers him some coffee. It is then, and only then, that Dinkelberg reveals that he actually is evil. Dun dun dun! He then takes Mr. Turner to his evil lair and explains that he is a part of the Mean Association, Ministry of Evil and Abusive Neighbors. He shows Timmy and his father how he accomplished all of his evil deeds, and even goes to the lengths of getting piranhas to eat Timmy's fairies so that they couldn't help him. It is only when Timmy asks Dinkelberg if he's actually evil, to which he confesses that he spent like $30,000 in order to create his lab, and surprise Mr. Turner that he is actually evil even though he isn't. Almost everything in his evil lair was fake, and even as the piranhas regurgitate the fairies. The only reason he did all of that was because he knew Mr. Turner thought he was actually evil and thought it would be nice to prove him right. The episode ends with Mr. Turner forcing Timmy to infiltrate their other next-door neighbor, as they might be part of the Mean Corporation as well. Mrs. Marinelli, she works with orphans! Girl voice! <laughs> This movie begins with Timmy wishing his millionth wish and everyone celebrating him. What they don't know is that it's actually his millionth and first wish as he made a secret wish without anyone knowing. In the fairy world, the fairies in charge review his wishes in order to make balloons and gags for the celebration, only for Timmy to be thrown in jail, accused of being the worst god kid ever. This is probably because of the mass destruction and chaos he's caused. Timmy then gets a trial, in which they see if he actually is the worst god kid ever. Unfortunately for him, he only has Cosmo representing him and Foop is going against him. After much consideration, the jury almost grants Timmy to be free, mostly after hearing about him wishing Poof into existence. Foop, however, digs deep through Timmy's files and finds out about this secret wish. Timmy admits to it and tells them that he made a wish for nobody to ever age. That way, he wouldn't ever have to get rid of Cosmo and Wanda. He then tells them that this wish was made 50 years ago. Because this is a major violation, the court decides that he is the worst god kid in existence, and that they are undoing every wish he's ever made, leaving Cosmo and Wanda to lose their child, and for them to erase Timmy's mind and send him back to the real world where everyone is aged like 50 years. 
Nobody in Timmy's life knows what's going on, as none of them understand the futuristic technology since they didn't live through its creation. Timmy knows something is off. He remembers that Crocker thought that he had fairies, so he and Crocker end up going to the Crocker cave in order to find out answers. They eventually find a portal to the fairy world, and once in the fairy world, they find Cosmo and Wanda. Once there, Timmy realizes that something is missing when seeing that Cosmo has a soccer ball dressed up like a baby and is clearly distressed about something. Slowly, they start to remember that they actually had a child. The three of them confront Jorgen, which Jorgen explains that there is a place that Secret Wishes go, and if they wish to see their child again, they can go there. Once they do arrive, they end up rescuing not only Poof, but other wishes as well, like Crimson Chin and Dark Laser. They do a retrial, where Timmy explains himself much better and gives a heartfelt speech about how much he loves his fairies and that they're his family, and he doesn't want to be abandoned by them. They grant him back his fairies, and all is well with the world. I got it! We were in Hoboken! This episode begins with Timmy being reckless as per usual and wishing for too big a things in front of his parents. Cosmo and Wanda warn him of this and remind him that if his parents find out about them and Jorgen finds out, then bad things will happen, such as them being taken away. However, Timmy doesn't listen and continues to wish for a large amusement park in his backyard. Slowly, his parents start to realize that strange things have been occurring around them, and they suspect that Timmy is some sort of witch. They eventually confront Timmy and barge into his room, causing him to confess about his fairies. His parents start to wish for things for themselves, which makes Jorgen slightly suspicious, but he's more so excited about the amusement park in Timmy's backyard. Eventually, though, Jorgen catches them and demands that Timmy's fairies be taken away and for all their memories to be erased. His parents feel bad and ask if they can just have their memories erased so that Timmy can keep them, and Jorgen agrees. He erases their memories and all is well inside of Timmy's world. Timmy, being the best boy, wishes for his mother to find her wedding ring, which was one of the wishes his father had made. His mother gets her ring back and his parents are oblivious and happy, just like how they should be. Season 9 begins with Timmy making a new friend. The episode begins with Timmy wanting a pet and not being able to enter any of the regular pet stores as he's been banned since he's a horrible pet owner. Cosmo and Wanda take him to the pet store in the fairy world. Once there, Timmy meets Sparky, who seems to be a super nice and cute fairy dog. Sparky proves to be a good choice after he saves Timmy from evil Vicky while she was over. However, when Timmy wakes up the next morning, pure chaos has erupted and it's all Sparky's fault. The house is underground. Cosmo and Wanda's wands are buried. Fleas start emerging from Sparky's fur and biting everyone around town. Once bitten, the people start turning into dogs. Timmy realizes that if he sprinkles the anti-flea dust on the humans that have turned, that they will be cured. He then hijacks a plane and crop dusts the entire city. After that whole situation is dealt with, Timmy says that he can't handle Sparky anymore and needs to give him back. This causes Sparky to run away and leave a message to Timmy telling him all of his favorite moments with him. Timmy feels bad about abandoning Sparky and vows to find him, until the breaking news says that there was much too much hair pent up in the drains from when everybody was a dog and it's going to cause the dam to burst. Timmy goes outside to flee the situation and ends up seeing none other than Sparky. He came back to say goodbye, just as the dam broke. Timmy dives in to rescue him. Sparky would have been fine anyways though, as apparently dog fairies can't die. Timmy apologizes to Sparky for what he said and asks him to return home to which Sparky agrees. In the anti-fairy realm, Foop was assigned to Vicky as he hadn't been assigned a person yet. Even Vicky disturbed Foop in a lot of different ways, some being her fruit fly problem in her house, her annoying wishes, or her horrifying laugh. After wishing multiple bad wishes and Timmy having to fix her chaos throughout the city, Vicky gets suspicious as to why her wishes keep getting undone. She soon finds out about Timmy and his fairies and vows to get rid of them somehow. Poof lets Vicky know that there is a way that she can lure his fairies away with the smell of rump roast. Apparently, it's the fairy's secret weakness. Vicky proceeds to do just that and then forces Timmy to do embarrassing things like dance forever and be zapped by monkeys whenever he tries to stop. Sparky saves him, however, and they run off. In order to save Cosmo and Wanda, Timmy realizes that Foop also doesn't enjoy Vicky, and he convinces Foop to help him get rid of her torment. Foop agrees, and Vicky loses once again. <laughs> Interestingly enough, this episode begins with Poof being assigned to Mrs. Crocker, Mr. Crocker's mother. Wanda is extremely opposed to this, especially after Poof comes home exhausted from all the obnoxious wishing she had made that day. 
To try and fix the situation, Wanda wants to get Mrs. Crocker to use a cheat wish, which is illegal in the rules. But after profusely trying this method and Mrs. Crocker still not caving, nothing seems to work. Timmy comes to the conclusion that in order to release Pooh from Mrs. Crocker, they have to make it so she's not miserable to deserve a fairy godparent. They find out that the only reason she's miserable is because Crocker doesn't seem to love her the way she loves him. They manipulate the two into confessing how they really feel about each other, and Mrs. Crocker finishes out the episode satisfied with her son and not needing any magical fairies. The first episode of season 10 begins with quite a surprise to the audience and to Timmy. It begins with a new girl being introduced to Timmy's class, Chloe. Bum bum ba! Timmy is instantly jealous of her, as she seems to be the perfect girl, as seen on her introduction video. Her being in the class was annoying for Timmy, but it wasn't until he went home that it became an actual issue. He learned that Chloe was his neighbor. Not only that, but his parents like her too. To make matters worse, Timmy then learns that he has to share his fairies with her because of the national fairy shortage. Timmy is, rightfully so, outraged. I mean, who wants to have to share their magical fairy godparents? I know I wouldn't. Anyway, sharing doesn't go the best at first, as Chloe starts mass panic throughout the town by wishing that everyone would share. Eventually, though, Timmy realizes that Chloe isn't actually perfect and deserves to have fairies just as much as he does. He apologizes to her for not being nice, and they became good friends by the end of the episode. I'm officially done with Later in this episode, Chloe learns that aliens really are real by being introduced to Mark. At first, she claims that there's no way they're real, but this episode begins with Timmy taking her to the landfill where Mark is hanging out. He asks Mark to reveal himself, and when he does, Chloe screams, which she describes as a, I just found out aliens are real and that's super, super cool scream. Chloe urges Mark to reveal his true forms so that he can fulfill his hairstyling dreams, but Timmy warns her of how dangerous that could be for him if he does. Chloe doesn't listen and asks Mark to switch to his real form anyways. Little did Chloe know that there were several government agents inside of Timmy's classroom and they instantly wanted to take Mark away. They run away, but are eventually captured by the government. All hope seems lost until Timmy shows up with Cosmo and Wanda disguised as a big fairy alien. He demands that they let Mark go before they blow up the Earth. He also throws in that they should let Chloe go and to let Mark style hair for a living. The government, the secret spy being Crocker's mom for some reason, lets him go and all is well. Although this marks the end of the last few episodes Nickelodeon aired, it's important to note this isn't the last thing Fairly Odd Parents did. They actually proceeded to release movies too, and obviously I can't not add those in the Jartoon recap. Me being stupid than an accident. I was trying to show off. Grow Up, Timmy Turner, marks the first movie ever created for the Fairly Odd Parents with real human actors. Ironically, Drake Bell as Timmy and Daniela Monet as Tootie. If you're in my age range, you would have watched Drake and Drake and Josh and Daniela in Best Known, in my opinion, as Tina from Victorious. Both shows are iconic and from Nickelodeon. The movie begins with us finding out that Timmy is now a 23-year-old grown man who still goes to elementary school, never moved out of the house, and still wears similar clothes, all in hopes of not growing up and losing his fairies. Another big rule of thumb is that in order to not grow up, you're not allowed to fall in love. This rule hasn't been an issue for Timmy until he runs into the most beautiful girl he's ever laid his eyes on, and it somehow ends up being Tootie? Remember that nasty, nerdy girl that I mentioned previously that was obsessed with Timmy? Well, apparently, puberty hit her like a truck, and she's now all Timmy can think about. This causes his fairies to panic, because the closer he gets to falling in love, the closer he is to losing Cosmo and Wanda. The movie has several plot differences, one being that there's a new villain who's obsessed with hurting the environment. It's shown that Tootie is a huge environmental girl and loves saving wildlife and things like that. When Timmy learns of this, he foils Magnate's plans, which causes him to find out about his fairies and vow to get rid of them for good. Shortly after this, Magnates kidnaps Tootie, Cosmo, and Wanda. Timmy eventually rescues them and all is well within their world. Timmy even goes to court in the fairy world and it's ruled that since Timmy loves his fairy godparents so much and because he's helped out the fairy world so much in the past years that he is allowed to keep his fairy parents. Him, Tootie, and his fairy family start a helping van where they help make wishes come true in order to help the environment. Finally, his first words. Following the events of the previous movie, this movie starts out with Timmy, Tootie, and his fairies granting different wishes for kids around the world. This causes a disruption in Santa's plan, though, as this wish granting has caused some children to move from the good list to the naughty list. Santa calls Timmy into his workshop to explain what's going on. Timmy tries to fix it by wishing away the issue, but furry magic doesn't work at the North Pole. 
and the energy ends up just shooting out of the wands and slamming into Santa. This causes Santa to become slightly brain dead and forces Timmy to take over as Santa. The only problem is that Timmy is also on the naughty list, so he can't pose as Santa either. The elves inform him that the only way for him to get removed from the naughty list is to visit Elmer the Elder Elf. Their journey is long, but when they do finally reach Elmer, he tells Timmy that he's not getting off the naughty list, as every wish he grants for children is actually done by Cosmo and Wanda, as they are the ones who actually have the powers. Elmer presumably leaves. Crocker is on the trip with them. He decided to tag along when he heard about the adventure. He was just at Santa's place to try and get off the naughty list. Crocker tells Timmy that he's proud of him for putting his life on the line just for the sake of Christmas. Elmer hears that Timmy somehow got through to Crocker's heart and deems him inherently good because of all this and takes him off the naughty list. Timmy then saves Christmas and all is well within the world once more. The last Fairly Odd Parent movie as of now is called A Fairly Odd Summer. I can't get too far into this movie because there isn't much information on it, nor is there any way for me to access it. But the main premise of the movie is that at the end, Timmy absorbs a bunch of magical energy and becomes a fairy himself. He's still dating Tootie, and he still stays in contact with Cosmo and Wanda, but he gets assigned his own godchild and can grant wishes and all that. An important reference that I thought was super cool that I didn't mention before is that one of the main protagonists, Dash Dexter, of another Nickelodeon show, Danny Phantom, is featured in Season 7, Episode 8, Fly Boy. Here's a fun clip of him inside the Odd Parent universe. All right, folks, that concludes my full recap of Fairly Odd Parents. I hope you enjoyed this episode and make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. I hope you all have a magical day.